in this jam-packed video I'm going to be talking about vintage compasses including this modern compasses accessories that go with both extension bars and anything else that comes up that I can share with you about how to make the most of your compasses and what some of them do and how they do it so this is matched with my website on which I've put down a whole bunch of information and links it'll be an overview and it'll be something based on where I am so I'm in the UK so there's certain brands that are easy and accessible for me to get to European or British brands that might not be accessible for you wherever you are so do bear in mind the quality and the nature of the compasses and the accessories rather than the exact brands especially if you have difficulty finding them you might have some amazing brands in your corner of the world and it'd be a shame to dismiss them my knowledge is not worldwide my knowledge is very uh, specific to what i can access i can see okay i think that's what i want to say in my intro let us begin so the first set of compasses i want to talk about are vintage compasses compasses that are no compasses that are no longer produced that you might have acquired from ebay from charity shops hand-me-downs uh, perglistan who is a um, somebody on instagram on facebook who sells vintage sets i'm sure there's other people like him so these are sets which are different brands now if you're based in the uk your ebay market will be different to one based in the us based in germany based in asia so you'll get to know what are the good brands there's a link to an excellent website on my equipment page and many other links on there where you can have a look at the brands that were producers of compasses and so on um okay so i just want to show you these quickly and i'll go into some of them detailed later so this is the set that i made from buying a few things and putting it together i'll go through that later i've got some road train compasses which are absolutely i keep calling them the king of compasses they're beautiful and i'll go through how they can be used um in buying things you sometimes acquire things that are of the same ilk so these are all my ruling pen things and sometimes you come across some very random sets by brands that you might not be familiar with in your area so this is a danish brand linex and i just oh, i was intrigued by the build quality and nature they were just a bit unusual the drop bow compass in this is so different to what i'm used to so kind of out of sheer curiosity and it wasn't expensive so i went for it and bought it and um i'll show this in a bit more detail later but this is just my miscellaneous box of spares and i've actually extracted all the spares i need for now um from it so it's just a pretty box okay let's have a look at some of them so this is one of my favorite compasses and i've got a bit of a strong inclination towards finding sourcing and looking after vintage sets so something like this okay it's an incomplete set i was gifted one by gia and i bought one as well they're beautifully built this one is rot ring literally red ring it's german so you see the red ring on all of their tools and their pens for example this is a rotring pen but i often forget to pronounce it so beautifully and i'm like rotring <laughs> anyway all right so the mechanism within it um is is very strong so you pull this down but you kind of need to be wary because it will really spring out quickly if you don't control it so you pull this down this circular piece it literally can move up and down and then as you do it it releases the teeth uh, releases from the teeth and you can open and close it so release and then close what a great noise now one thing that's really good about it it has this uh, ring here and it's got a thread and you can put in there the attachment i'll get out my other rope ring just showing off now did you see that so this ring you can put in here this attachment 
after you release this I'll just fully do it so you can see that's the mechanism for putting in the pencil uh, the two millimeter lead okay and this can be angled as you wish so you can get it nice and perpendicular to the paper imagine that's my paper everything's nice and perpendicular if you so wish you can get really nice small radius and then make it perpendicular again and it can go really small actually and it can also take a technical pen so something like this if you unscrew the lid and unscrew the end let's put that aside it can go in this way and let's just angle it so that I don't have to do it too difficultly and then you've got that or let's just unscrew it it usually goes in the other way as well and then you've got your compass set up for technical drawing so this is an ink a cartridge a steel nib so the ink is flowing through the mechanism and you get beautiful ink drawings king okay. and this setup is just one of the best uh, the third final thing you can do you can buy these special short mechanical pen um, compass attachments and then you can put that in but it's 0.5 millimeter which is a little bit to what I'm used to, I used to draw with that, but now it's more like 0.3 mil millimeter. But yeah, again, you can adjust it and get it perfect. So it's really versatile in one sense, but versatile with finicky things that you might not have. Um, so for example, these you have to buy maybe specialist. This is about 20 pounds and then the leads. This compass is a vintage Harling compass, really well and beautifully built. It just has one mechanism to open and close it, just that. And it's nice and slow. So you could insert two pins if you like, points, sorry, um, or a point and a lead. And uh, the lead then becomes super important, as does the point. So if I just open up point, you can see it's slipping around in my hand so if you look at it on one side there's something that looks like a bit of a stump but from it is this very short needle so this is a shouldered point and on the other side is a tapered point so if you were to pierce this into something from the tapered side the hole would get bigger and bigger but from the other side it would just be one small um, point and then it wouldn't allow itself or you to make a bigger hole so that is the point you should use when you're working on paper. Um, this is really dangerous, so I always poke myself on it. So that's why it's a little bit more protruding than I normally would have, but because I keep hurting myself with it. Now the leads, if you buy a compass, it might come with a HB lead, something not very hard. So therefore this is something that you want to perhaps replace and get a hard lead and then sharpen and maintain. So let's have a look at the leads you can get. So I bought, I guess, two sets. Um, this is from Staedtler and this, uh, these are 2H LEDs. And when you eventually open up the very tricksy box, they are sharpened, which is fabulous, and they're really long. So they are two millimeter. Let's just check if I can read it somewhere. Yay, two millimeter LEDs. So they are used for most majority compasses are two millimeter LEDs. And you can also use them in a clutch pencil. This set are from uh, Kohinu Hardmouth. And cheekily, they haven't sharpened it. So let's sharpen a lead. I can show you the dramas of such things. So the three things I use to sharpen them. And I would never do this near my work. So I do this far away from my work. In another room in a cupboard. No. <laughs> but if you do, then you need to use paper towel or something to keep the sharpenings away from your work and then give yourself a bit of a clear up because your fingers will get messy and I'm going to sharpen this in three different ways and you can see how it goes so this one it's a bit tricksy and fiddly and it takes ages you know when you usually sharpen a pencil you do a few rotations and you're done so this to get to a fine point you know you're building up the whole point and before you know it six years have passed Oh. 
so I find on its own it gets to a certain point and then it's just like hardly anything so having an emery board and just turning it and sharpening it and turning it and sharpening it sanding down that point is a really good backup so I normally just break off however much I think I need and then this can go in the lead okay so that's one I'm going to show you this amazing contraption but to use this just with the lead is very tricky so you have to have a clutch pencil now some of the clutch pencils they have a sharpener in the end but this one by Kohinu doesn't so if you buy one from another brand I think Staedtler it has it in the end so you just insert the lead I think that's as far as it goes and then this you can see the state of it it's just a stub when you put it in here it grips on and when you rotate it it's like you're stirring a pot because it's not vertical it's at an angle and yeah again you have to take your time but it does give a super duper sharp point all on its own oh and actually you know i'm wiping it on this there's also a little wiping thing here so in there there's a little sponge that used to be white but now it's quite lead in color but let's get one more go and give it a wipe and yeah hopefully you can see that's a very sharp point this was sharp as well but because they're hard leads they will stay sharp for ages um and you'll get a nice point um the final way in which i sharpen the leads is turn them into a wedge and this is the one that's the quickest especially when i'm preparing for workshops and there's so many to do and let's take one that isn't wedged so this you can see is just a stump all you do is use the sandpaper and then it's done and because it's a hard lead and because the way it touches the paper is always at the same angle it should be fine can you hear the helicopter <laughs> so this is a selection of modern compasses that you can buy online or from art shop specialists they all have certain qualities that make them better and far more useful for what we do than school compasses this is probably the closest to a school compass because of its price it was under 10 pounds but let's go through them kind of a set at a time so the first compass i bought was this Staedtler it was around 40 pounds and it's got the bar here and you can replace this and put in a pen holder i use this for my own work when i was studying with art of islamic pattern it traveled to morocco it did lots and lots for me one thing about a good brand is my compass started wobbling and um it started moving the arms so even when it was supposed to be stiff it moved so i wrote to them and they sent me a replacement i sent mine to them so this is one thing about buying from a good reputable brand they want to look after their equipment and they want you to have a good experience so this compass it was one of the most expensive i think it's almost 40 50 or 60 pounds now as the set it's a really nice big set and it's got an extension bar there's links on my website but they kind of stand by their brand so that was the first thing i bought for me the next thing I did is in terms of buying compasses for my teaching I didn't have a big budget and I needed to buy something like 20 compasses so I bought this set and what drew me to it was the fact that there were two compasses in the set and for around I think it was seven eight nine pounds that was amazing to get two compasses both had the wheel so it wasn't like one was just a plain compass both had exposed screws so therefore I could tighten them and I used to prepare my compasses for the workshop you know quite carefully and they have been used by multiple people i nearly say hundreds but they were brilliant the one thing that's really faffy about them is you have to take the screw out and the nut and then insert it and it's super fiddly but if you buy it for your own and you've got a limited budget this is a uk brand that i think is really quite good and good value for money
Um, this Staedtler compass was given to me very recently and Muhammad al Janabi made a great video about it. I, I think his point was you don't need the fanciest compasses and this gives you all you need from it. And one of the strongest things that he recommended was these pen holders that have this curved part in the pen attachment and that makes a big difference to the sturdiness and the accuracy of your drawing and you know i was so amused by this because i'm forever swapping in and out the bad ones of these and i'll show you a bad one for the good ones of these and so i have a few stateler pen holders that i'm swapping in for my classes and i thought oh he said it so kind of eloquently and he drew a little diagram and i thought i was doing that too <laughs> you feel very validated when you do these random things so um yeah it's a great great compass uh good value if you just want to buy one that's new not have to do the hunting around great this one's kind of totally left field i was given to me at a, a stationery show by the company who produced them so uh, the company that produced linex and jack hour and all of them they're all pretty much the same so i kind of had a great conversation with them and told them how popular compasses are and they gave me this one and it's got really amazing mechanism so one thing i wanted to say is these compasses that are a little bit different so you know we're in the international world um we might have different brands available to us but look at the quality of them and see if you can look up the brand to see if they're reputable rather than just a brand new one and then with that bit of research you can be reassured that you're buying something decent these two are what i work with the most so in my workshops everybody gets this compass uh, because we work in pencil and transfer tracing paper styly, um, this is the standard compass I provide. And it's got a wheel, really solid mechanism, and I think it's great. Uh, and again, it was not expensive, and it does exactly what I want it to do very sturdily. Sturdily, that's a great word. This is my compass that I use probably the most nowadays. Um, and this is what I was saying about swapping pen holders. I've put in there... A stateler pen holder because all the standard the fittings are standard so you can just swap things in and out it's got the quick release mechanism which is easy and then there's no give and the wheels brilliant so it's nice heavy solid quality and in my neck of the world neck of the world neck of the woods it's really not too expensive the extension bar I have to use a lot so I love the fact that it's just so easy to use and I'm quite quick at it i'll show you this one in a bit more detail but yeah these are my modern compasses so we have um our jacquard compass and we have an extension bar so i just want to show you how you can swap these in usually if your compass comes with an extension bar the the way it looks at one end tells you how to put it in so can you see there's that kind of groove mark let's get it nice and close so on the square part there's a bit of a line a groove and then that will tell you how it needs to be replaced. And also, what are you replacing? So this is clearly something that holds the point. So let's do this. So I'm going to remove the point here, like this. And this, if I look in there, there's a hole for the circular part. But then there's um, an angle at which it should go. There we go. And this took me a long time to figure out because I kept inserting it incorrectly. So do be patient with yourself and do kind of try and get the angle right. And then it tightens. So this is one place where it tightens. And then this can move up and down. So that, let's get it really big and tighten that. And then this needle goes in here. But I need to loosen this first and then insert it. Go in, baby, and then tighten it. Oh, are you going to stay tight? Okay, so therefore it's ready to go, and it does become a two-hand manoeuvre. And even this, if I opened it out to the maximum, that is quite decent. And if I then bent this arm, you've got a great solid thing. But before you draw with it, do just push and pull and tug it and check to make sure it doesn't move. So. I didn't insert that needle completely and so when I pushed on it it went in a little and so that's a brilliant radius how big are we going here let's have a look so that's almost oh 27 centimeters do check the official kind of 
maximum radius that comes in the description and then you can see what it is so you need you need the knee joints to uh, assist you loving that i feel like just drawing big circles now so the last set i want to talk about are mostly vintage compasses but what we've got here is the pen holder has a thread in it so therefore you can't put in a normal pen uh, or a pencil and there's no tightening mechanism it'll just slip through and even if it's a good fit you know it, it just won't work so this is called a technical pen holder and that thread needs to be matched by the pen so I've bought a couple of sets just so I can have a technical pen holder because I have some technical pens so these are different thicknesses they're steel nibs they're about 20 pounds each so they're expensive and this set I've got are called Repeater Graph. I know two of them are kind of dried up and a bit naughty. Um, but this one seems to be okay. You need to look after your um, pens. So it's got ink in the cartridge. And you've already seen that to put the lid on and off. You need to um, screw them in and out. I'm just going to see if it's actually going to work for us. Let's see. Yay, so it's a steel nib and the ink is feeding through. So the first thing is that you don't need the whole pen for it. You just feed in either from the top or from the bottom the pen. And the accuracy and the joy of painting with actually fluid ink is really good. Now what you need to make sure you do is do a few checks on the flow before you start. Because you might need to dismantle this and wash it out and just check that it's okay because mine blobbed at the beginning and this is ink so it's not going to be washable and if you can get it flowing beautifully um, it's brilliant so this one I haven't used for months weeks years I think I've mentioned vintage tools quite a lot and I want to show you one of the things I've done so I've made up a kit for myself so a lot of the things I have are multiple and excessive because of the work I do now I I think this idea of collecting vintage tools some might think it's hoarding or excessive but think about this right if we're not going to use them who else will they're being looked after by us so I have no qualms about collecting stuff like this and holding on to it and taking care of it for, well firstly let me just say these boxes they were one of the reasons I bought a kit one of the first things I lost was a small screw on my compass and it was a normal modern compass and I was like well how do I buy it just one screw um, and then another thing that happened to me is I broke the pen holder so when I kind of realized that these tiny finicky little things are things that I'll be using I thought well let me look out for miscellaneous sets so I did it maybe two or three times and then I ended up with um, one sort of bit of kit where it's just ruling pen and ruling pen attachment these are my spares that i've actually taken what i needed from to make my kit and look so thornton was the company and who is mts somebody took some great pride in making this set so i don't know i really like it um having random old stuff I think I'm becoming an old retired man but anyway <laughs> and these screws have been so vital because I'm always swapping things in and out and then I've dropped them and I can't find them so I know I've got a bit of spare kit um, and also the screw drivers so a lot of the old compasses all of their screws are exposed so then you can tighten them up and give them a bit of a polish and a uh, <laughs> I don't know what else and look after them all right let's put this one away so this is my kit that I've put together. So I found the box and what I've done is this is the box I go for, for when I want to do small circles. So I've got one, um, two, this drop bow. I have to say this drop bow is a vintage one. The point on this is so sharp and I had bought a new one and it wasn't so sharp. So if I want to draw small circles and I want to use a drop bow compass, which isn't that common to be honest, this is the one I would use. But apart from that, I would use this small one and this small one. I've got a set of a pair of dividers. So if you don't want to mark your paper with any pen marks and you want to gently step round a distance and check it, then dividers are perfect for that. Then I've got two compasses which take the technical pens and I've got the screws exposed 
so I can tighten them up before I get started. I've got my sharpening things, so the pencil sharpener that fits in here and then two emery boards and then these are spare leads and these are spare points and one set is superior to the other set so this set are all ones that have shouldered points and finally this is the compass i would use the most if i want to draw in pencil really good size solid as anything i get really decent accuracy with it that is my set that's made up of things i've collected together